Hello people of the internet, I'm GMA Tank, here to share with you how I created this monstrous spider diorama. I realize this video is almost a year old since I first launched it on Paint to Life, but I have been busy trying to get back into the channel and make some more content. I had this on file and I never actually released this video of this monster, but I've always meant to because I was very proud with how it turned out. And uh, here I am, I miss talking to a lot of you but uh, hopefully I can be more active in the coming while. This particular diorama was almost entirely 3D printed. It was built with the Mars Elegoo 3D resin printer, the Mars 3, no, just regular Mars 3, not Pro. The men on it, the eggs, the geodes, the diorama itself entirely 3D printed with the exception of the XPS foam that served at its base. So I'm gonna go through it with you in case you liked some of the things and want to know how they were done, you'll be able to find that here. And uh, for those of you who haven't been painting with me for a while, again, it's been a long time. I hope to get back in the saddle. So here's a list of the paints I used. It's quite a few of them. And the model didn't exist. This particular model comes from Lord of the Print um, on their December 2021 Patreon. It was the Pestilence Spider. So my 3D printer came from Elegoo Mars almost two years ago now. I got it, I unboxed it, I got the curing kit as well as the um, UV station. I set it up here originally um, beside the furnace, which is a terrible idea if you are using high percentage IPA. So I've since moved it. But I printed this in a transparent resin. As you can see here, prints came out wonderfully. The transparency slightly cloudy once it was done, but they were great for my purposes. I assembled the spider and there it was. Now one of the things I wanted to do with this is it was transparent, I printed it that way for a reason so we could keep some of those transparencies to our uh, benefit. You can see I broke off a piece but little green stuff attaches it back on and you're laughing. So the liquid mask on the parts that I want to keep transparent, some green stuff to fill some of the seams in the model and I'm going to uh, assemble it and let that mask dry. That'll allow the transparent resin to do its job um, after it's been painted and changed color. So once it was finished, all the tips, all like the fingernail looking protrusions were there and then a little bit of chaos black primer to get it all ready to go. And it uh, was quite a nasty looking model, very neat. It's about the size of a human hand. So once it's primed, I'm gonna use a knife and I'm gonna use my safety gloves there and uh, pull off some of those liquid latex bits with tweezers and the X-Acto blade. So you're just using it to score and peel it off and it pulls off nicely, exposing the transparent bits behind. So all the pieces that I had painted cyan in those previous colors are there. And this was the palette that I used for the spider to start. Some death corp drab. Um, I went into this project really not knowing what the colors were going to be, uh, what I was going to see. I wanted to paint it green because, you know, geez, it's been a long time since I painted this. Almost a year and a half since I actually did that. <laughs> so most of this is just going to be me talking to whoever likes to listen to some of my painting videos and those who have missed watching or hearing from me for a while. I'll do my best to recollect why I did what I did or why, how and whatnot. But uh, basically, I wanted a green spider. <laughs> it's that simple. But you can see here the parts that are still transparent, they were covered with the mask. So now some Death World Forest for some green accents. Lord of the Print is a Patreon supporter I kind of, admittedly, I kind of go on and off with. Um, sometimes I'm less interested in the stuff they put out than others, but I'd say of all the 3D models I've printed from uh, Patreons and whatnot, or tribes from my mini factory. I like Lord of the Prints the best. Now some Nurgling green on some of the chunkies. Touch these little bits. And uh, Strachan green for the arms and legs. Um, fun fact about the 3D resin, it's quite brittle. So if you drop that on a hard floor, it's gonna shatter. Um, as I did break the tip of the leg you saw earlier in the video where I repaired it with some green stuff. Um, but, I mean, that's just the name of the game, right? When you're using a, a 3D printer, uh, unless you use PLA, which is like the ribbon, the 
uh, glue gun approach, you're going to always have a hard resin. The, the UV resin gets hard and brittle, but you know, with proper care, they're great. And the detail is beautiful. So I'm using some sh contrast paint, some shyish purple on the inside of this mouth. This is going to change a bunch throughout the video as I play around with different options. Black primer, um, it works okay uh, for me. And again, the Chaos Black is the you know typical go-to primer I like to use, just because the particulate's so small, it goes on nice and silky. So now this is the Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint. Even though I like the colors that I had, I painted this over everything. So I know when I started doing this, people weren't really talking about slap chop. That's a thing now. This was not slap chopped, but all the little greens that I used of various um, darknesses lended themselves well to the play bearer flesh going on somewhat transparent and giving an overall green kind of tying in all those undertones together and as they dried the darker stayed dark and the lighter stayed dark uh, light and I kind of was left with sort of the kind of akin to a slap chop method voluptuous pink for the tongue again the contrast paint going on that transparent resin leaves it clear and let let let's light pass through a yanadin yellow for the teeth around that tongue and the separation behind its neck into this cool head plate i've printed a lot of things with transparent resin since and uh, i really do like it when you think about it it's the same price and if you have a 3d printer you can paint it like a chalk green or what other colors the default gray but you're going to prime it all anyways you might as well do it transparent and then if you prime it, it doesn't matter and if you want to leave parts of it like spell effects or um, parts that you want to be transparent or tinted like this then you can so transparent resin is my go-to resin i use the elegu brand uh, the the low fuming like the natural one it's been a long time so again all these little claws that I left transparent I'm putting this end and yellow on and they're looking very fingernaily and I enjoy that the stinger as well what's coming next what's coming next oh yeah there you go uh, still shot and on the kitchen table it was pretty cool needed a little bit of uh, contrast though so next some hellion green dry brushing just to get a little bit of the, the raised areas and kind of highlight some of the textures of the the spider looks like really cool in a chitinous kind of way like a hard shell on its um, mandibles and legs where's the back they had an armored version of this as well on the patreon and they also have one where it's being ridden by a like a big gross ogre but I, I, I opted for the non armored one because I wanted it to look like a spider in its natural form whatever so there goes the dry brushing to try and bring out some of that and you know I guess if I was an art student I could tell you how that's affecting the plague bear green but I'm not an art student so you just do it until you're happy that's the best way the best part about this hobby speaking of hobby well I haven't put out a paint to life episode in a long time I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons and I've been painting and 3d printing miniatures been painting a bunch of whiz kids from my friendly local gaming store I um, don't do commissions still I don't have the time I've been really busy with work but I am looking forward to getting back into um, paint to life episodes because I, I hear from a lot of you who enjoy them there are a lot of work to make and after doing so many in such a short period of time I kind of burned myself out but I never stopped enjoying making them and even talking now on this microphone is getting me kind of excited to uh, to work process again so again I, I have no intention of going anywhere but I just can't commit to a regular schedule the way I had especially during COVID when there was a lot more downtime and less to do so I'm putting a gloss medium on some of these transparent parts especially the parts that I want to look slimy and moist um, you know they have Ard shield or storm shield from Citadel but just a regular gloss medium paint on there it dries and just keeps everything looking moist. Now, if you're doing the whole model, you can get like a satin finished rattle can. I've used those before on some models, but in this case, it's just these parts of the spider that I want to look drippy, that I'm going to gloss up with this brush. Oh, and I guess the stinger too. How about that? 
Uh, Tesseract glow not shown right so I think I used that on the eyes but I didn't paint they didn't film it anyways I think the eyes change a bunch of colors but you can see the finished copy how I did them there's nothing special about it okay and then yeah yeah Nurgle's rot this is like the uh, blood for the blood god citadel line for the Nurgle the plague things in the Warhammer you know I'm not a Warhammer player but uh, a lot of props to those of you who are it's a lot of work and I appreciate it but Nurgle's rod I don't get to use very much it but it does dry in the same consistency as blood from blood for the blood god but instead of being like a real blood it's it's a nice snotty boogery looking mucus so I'm excited when I get to try some things I don't always use hence the Nurgle's rot in the on the over top of whatever colors I put beneath it there to make that the face sort of peeling off of the thorax it's got a neat look and effect to it there he is up close as the Nurgle's rot's drying okay so now some little spiders chaos black I 3d printed um, stalagmites stalactites um, bodies eggs geodes uh, here's some of the bodies and Oh, and I really should link where these came from. I got them on my mini factory. If you search for dead cultists, you can buy them. The STL files were like five dollars or yeah, five bucks for four models. So you can see it's very flat, but it's perfect for my needs. So I'm painting up these cultists. And if you saw the episode from Paint to Life about the BAS, the big ass spider, these were the cultists who raided the lair and ignored all the signs of danger, thinking that they were uh, you know, king king shit and they didn't need to worry about all the little spiderlings until they were zerged at the end so again paint to life what does it mean i mean you're painting these things for fun but to tell the story what's the story behind this cultist how did he meet his end at this spider what was he doing there so i'm painting up these um, cultists using you know a nice traditional burgundy nargoth knight uh, you know purples and blues palettes to look like robed cultists um, there's a guy who's slouched. He's also dead, holding his guts. I also got a one of the three free spiders from Lord of the Print on this model, which we'll see. And again, if you go, if you if you have a 3D printer now and you want to try printing, I'm sure you know this, but Thingiverse.com, Thingiverse, T-H-I-N-G-I-V-E-R-S-E, you'll find a bunch of free models. If you type stalagmites, you can find tons of STLs people have put up for free. Some people you can support if they link a Patreon or a, uh, like a My Mini Factory uh, account. And I have done that, like these cultists. I'm not about, I'm, I'm totally about supporting artists and anyone who's um, spending their time to share these sorts of uh, files with the community. And they're not too expensive on a case by case basis. So as you can see, XV88 put some boots on him here. Um. And his gloves. These guys are just figures that are going to factor into the story, but just interesting and fun to paint. Later on, we're also going to see some of the spider serum from Green Stuff World. I had bought that a long time pr prior and never got to use it, but I knew I was going to use it in this video, and I was very excited to try. Um, and once we get to the basing section of this video, you'll see uh, how I made all that work. So as we continue to paint these cultists, how are you? It's been a while. Why don't you call? Yeah, the channel's, you know, growth obviously slowed to a bit of a standstill as I've been inactive. But, you know, I like to remind people, you know, there are 70 episodes of Paint to Life on there of varying stories. that They're always fun to watch, even if you haven't seen them all. If you like the storytelling aspect with the paint combined, there's also every story. Also has a painting video just like this one where um, you know my technique is certainly nothing special but as I've been painting with people I've gone to some paint parties I've done some in-store demos and I love telling people you know it, your your ultimate skill with this is completely irrelevant less than one one hundred thousandth of us will win a painting award and that those are for the pros just like in anything but the majority of everyone who watches this channel and everyone who is a part of the hobby are just hobbyists having a good time and taking something that otherwise is nothing and making it something that's their own unique 
that they can be proud of and show their friends and family and man i'm my dm campaign right now that i'll be highlighting on the channel in the coming months um you know the the, the my main requirement to join is that you bring a mini i don't care even if it's not painted i want you to bond with that piece of plastic on the table i want you to let it inspire you and you it as you paint it if you if you can paint it and you know a, a painting kit pretty inexpensive and get going and mixing colors and just get right into the hobby it's a great thing so this is a Balor Brown this is one of the spiders again this is a free STL you can get from Lord of the Print if you go explore their different socials this worked really well it looks very real it's kind of creepy I mean if there was a spider like that probably in Australia <laughs> it would probably kill you but I mean there's some nasty ones in North America too like the brown recluse um, back to our boy some snake bite leather which is a great contrast paint on top of any of the mustards it gives it a nice green um, no sorry not green orange hue and it gives it a kind of cool leather effect especially with some highlights I usually use it as you can see I'm using it on all cultist boots and gloves but if the boots and gloves were all started as a different base then they're all gonna look slightly different which is kind of the goal but the snake bite just gives you your instant leather and a pail and I've never spilt my non oils or my contrast paints with even without a little fancy holder they just sit there as you can see and they've never been knocked over so just take be careful and you'll you'll be fine so just putting a little bit of that uh, dark oath flesh onto the fleshy areas some screamer pink highlights on top of these robes on the highs uh, on top of that burgundy and the dagger oath or whatever the colors were again I doubt that any single person in the world is going to try and recreate this model the way I did. This video is more of a, a hello to the people who'd like to watch it and also just uh, there are a couple cool tricks, especially in the base that I'll show you when we get there. Some Stormhole Silver on the belt. In fact, one of the coolest things I did in this video I think was unique to me. So if you're here watching and listening to this right now. Coming up in the base, you're going to see me do something that I've never seen anyone do. Now, I'm not saying that, it's a, that no one's thought of it or, or I just haven't seen it, possibly. But um, a lot of the things I've done in Paint to Life over the years are inspired by other creators. Whether it be the cocoons I've done on spiders, the barrels I've made out of um, cardboard. You know, you watch another YouTuber do something and you say, oh, that, that would look cool. The smoke out of cotton balls. But... In this one, I came up with something on my own that I really, really appreciated. So when we get to that, I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And um, let me know what you think in the comments below. So that's about it for all the models that are going to go on this diorama. Let's see, what do we have next? There are your cultists and your spider. <laughs> Love them. There's a spider. Creepy Carly boy. Same kind of colors as the big mama. See how that looks almost real? If you painted it to real life colors it would spook someone here are my eggs and my geodes which were also pa uh, painted printed and then i used a little test palette to see how the different contrast paints would work on the uh on the transparency so um here we are putting some dirt down around the base of this geode cluster and i had some extras painted so what i did was i broke them off I broke them off the base. The base was a very bulbous, kind of flowery. All right, now this is the trick. It got, came up a little faster than I thought. I took the eggs, which were these little round balls. I mean, just nothing special, some balls with texture. And I used my rotary tool to drill a hole in the center of the eggs, like a bead, okay? Make sure you wear a mask for this. You don't want the, the flaky resin to get up in your, in your nostrils and breathe that in. So once they were drilled, I put them in water, and you can see you can have your drilled holes there. It just doesn't go all the way through. And now that I have these eggs with these drilled holes, what I did was I painted inside them with like a yellow, eanodin yellow contrast paint. And then you can see in the finished copy, once I put the green on them, that yellow is inside, almost like a, a yolk. So we'll see that again later. I kind of just showcased it there, but the trick was using 3D resin that's transparent, drilling a hole in the center painting inside and then painting the outside a different color two different transparency paints kind of looks neat so now this was kind of i was going for like a geode kind of look and again the cluster was all right but i preferred the broken ones even more so than the cluster so i 
broke some of them off. I try to keep as much... Yeah, that purple is very dark and, and like a little too solid, but just trying to keep it at the top to try and look like a, a quartzy kind of topaz... Uh, quartzy kind of geode look to them as best I could, keeping it darker on the top than on the bottom. And then Vulpus Pink, again, for some of them around the bottom, so it's more purple on the top and pink at the bottom. I haven't really got the time to explain this in this video, but I also, uh, since making this, I actually destroyed my 3D printer. I should probably save that for another story, for another day. What are these? Oh, these are more of the geodes by themselves. Yeah, here's a, just as, in a nutshell, don't leave resin in your vat. I did it just fine. People do it for short periods of time, but the FEP can actually get small little holes and if you leave it in the vat for say three months like I did it will seep through those holes into your printer and brick your whole printer so again I'll talk about that in another video but when in Rome don't leave 3d resin in your vat okay let's go to making this big board I'm sorry if you want to hear more about my misery of breaking my 3d printer but don't worry I've since replaced it much to the chagrin of my wife when she found out how much they cost so I think I snuck the first one in <laughs> but we'll get back to that so here I am using my safety gloves and a knife to cut this piece of XPS foam now I'm just using my hot wire foam cutter to kind of score and etch the sides of this now this I had no idea what the hell this was gonna look like I had a big piece of foam I just started working it you know you certainly don't want those strong edges so what are you doing here I don't know I'll just kind of drag it along making these scours like that oh that looks does that look good ah shit I don't know whatever just keep going for it let's go <laughs> double down let's just keep scouring everything scour 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 I mean okay once it's all painted, you won't necessarily see it as much. I don't know how natural of a cave floor that looks. But, as you can see, I took my trusty a rock and scraped all those things to, to further soften those hard edges and make it a little bit more natural. I suppose all the spiders skittering around might cause etching in the rocks over periods of time. Yeah, we'll go with that. Some black craft paint and some Mod Podge mixed together make a nice little sealant. As you've seen many other YouTubers do, perhaps. It goes on. Just goop that shit all over the place. It's going to harden like an eggshell. Like a Dairy Queen ice cream. And, uh... You know you're a fat guy when you use food analogies to describe paints. Nom nom nom. <laughs> some baby craft rocks, again. Um, just putting some natural stone cover on there once they dried. I don't even think they dried. I think I'm just mod podging them right into. Just I want to try and keep that floor... You know, and that helps also mask all those scratches that I made. Now what if I got some regular size rocks? Again, Mod Podge, which is like a glue. Just holds it all together. Some looks like sand going on there, lightly. Uh, because it's still wet. Gives it another texture. And I think I'm happy now. Because I was a little worried with all those lashes. Now, how am I going to stick? Oh, geez, that was dumb. So here's a 3D printed pool I have here. I probably should have glued it on before I finished all the sand and rocks because now I've got a bumpy surface, but it worked. And I used Astro Granite, a technical paint, to fill because of course it's not flush with the foam since I just stuck it on a bunch of baby rocks, right? And sand. So it's kind of bumped up a little, but it's on there pretty good. And using the Astro Granite to kind of fill in that crack and blend it in. And I'm going to prime this whole thing when it's done anyways. So that'll work. But, yeah, I should have glued this pool on first. And there's a finished picture of it primed with a white ink. Or Zenithal primed. So, yeah, that, that's your cave for. All right. Now, it's just pretty white, so I'm using Dark Oath Flesh to spray on there to get it uh, a little brown. I think I have a clog in my airbrush because it's kind of going on pretty spattery there. I'm fighting with it. There we go. We're good now. 
So I've got this brown and I'm thinking, hmm, brown, is that the color of a cave? Aren't caves supposed to be like purple or gray? So let's try something else after I finish fighting with the airbrush. Yeah, shyish purple. There we go. So now this is looking under darky. Brown is just to 100 feet below the surface. Purple, true on under dark boys and girls and everyone's. Okay, now a dry brush of slanish gray. This just helps pick up some of those high level grit pieces, the textures of the slag mites, the uh, sand, and uh, makes kind of a softer diffused light effect. And some uh, makeup brushes you can see there from Walmart. They're great dry brushing materials, different sizes for different applications. And now um, some Dawnstone dry brushed on as well for the higher points. This was a fun project. I enjoyed this. It's too bad it was so long ago. I could probably be a little bit more concise. All right, placement. Everyone take your positions. Buddy's in the pool. My guys are down. It's a little bit of sticky glue. Put him there. This is going to be a pool of acid. So how are we going to do that? Well, blood for the blood god first. He's missing two arms. He's missing his torso. Oh no, his torso's there. He's missing his legs, two arms, and he's kind of just in that cave pool. Um, I like painting with gore. I don't always get to do it. Athonian camo shade as a base for the bottom of the pool before the UV resin goes in. Because UV resin is transparent, and then this will kind of give it some color. You can dye these resins, I know, and I've never really been successful at it. And I always make the same mistake that I'm going to make in this video. So first I put in my UV resin. Let that goop in there. You can use a, a lighter or a butane torch to get any bubbles out. I, it's not very much. I won't need it. Um, oh, look at that, a toothpick. Now UV light goes on, hardens it right up. I paint on top of it. So it, see, see it looks cloudy, that water? I skipped a bunch here. I'm putting more things on, but see the water? in the UV resin it looks cloudy because I painted um, contrast paint on it don't, don't do that if you want a transparent UV resin don't try and paint over top of it it'll always look cloudy I've made that mistake on so many dioramas the tub for daddy the Kong versus T-Rex you think I would have learned but nope I constantly make that mistake so now I'm affixing some of these eggs oh this is the fun part you can see those eggs see how they have the yellow inside them and I'm adding plague bearer fresh flesh to them so those eggs are transparent with a yellow core and putting this plague bearer flesh um, paint on them is uh sneeze <coughs> oh excuse me i should probably edit that out i'm not gonna edit that out i'm sorry i hope i didn't sneeze too loud <laughs> plague bearer f flesh on top of those eggs i thought looks really really cool so if there's anything else you can get out of this video other than that sneeze it's that yeah, transparent resin drilled, painted on the inside, and then painted on the outside. And then some Nurgle's Rot gives them that nice sheen and um, high-level goop effect. Very cool. In my opinion. But what do I know? So, the eggs are looking good. I really like the eggs. The dudes are looking good. I've got some crystals lying around. I've got the nest, the cluster there. And pretty soon I'm going to be breaking out the, the spider web. So one more Nurgle's Rot. Do I put it on the pool? I think the pool looks like I tried to do some swirl there with different colors to make it look. But yeah, I hate it. I hate that. Oh, look at Nurgle's Rot. Sure, let's put Nurgle's Rot on the pool too. Let's just keep messing with that pool. Right? Yeah, we know. It's Nurgle's Rot. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I mean, maybe because I was trying to get it to be less cloudy by putting this glossy Nurgle's Rod on it. I mean, it's kind of cool. This is a fun diorama. It's an acid pool. Let's go for it. And the eggs kind of, yeah, I like it. I've changed my mind. I like it. <laughs> you can stay in the family. But stop touching it. That's enough. Go off the pool now. <laughs> Spider Storm. Here it goes. In the airbrush. You can see it going on there like candy floss. 
as I spray it on in the time lapse it's kind of neat to see it look peeling like grandma's attic now what did you tell what did I tell you was my favorite part about this diorama my eggs right what did I just do to all my eggs covered them in spider serum so now I have ye old toothbrush I think it's my wife's toothbrush and I'm literally scrubbing the eggs off of scrubbing the spider serum off of the eggs uh, gloss medium okay maybe I glossed them up a little more too oh yeah that's right because I think the spider serum dull dulled the effect of the Nurgle's rot so by glossing them up again yeah, it was a little bit of a misfire, but you know what? It's all right. Finally, let's mount this spider. How do you mount the spider on this XPS foam? Well, don't drill it. I used my rotary tool to try drilling the hole in the, in the bottom and it broke, it broke like it chipped. So instead I used this acrylic rods and some green stuff, balanced it like underneath until it hardened. And then I put it into this um, mechanism to kind of level it upright and let it sit there for 24 hours till it dried. And now uh, that's all good. Let's take a look. So here's a couple of angles of our finished spider. This poor guy cutting the webs. There's our spider boy up front with some of our exposed eggs. That guy's been skewered in the back. That spider has just so many cool legs that look very pointy and pincy. Uh, there's one. Of, there's that other spider crawling down the uh, oh, more eggs. Yeah, there's that guy's big boy's dirty tongue. Very cool. Some loose crystals, head on. This looks really cool in real life. It's about 12 inches square is that base. And uh, that's all she wrote. So that's it for how I made the spider diorama from episode 70 of Paint to Life. If you did not see the episode and want to see about the big ass spider, you can click the link here. You might have seen it a year ago when I put it out, but I've been so busy. But I'm glad I finished this. It was a lot of work to put all this together, especially a year and a half after I painted it. But I really hated the fact that I had an episode that didn't have a how I made this video. So even if only 10 of you watched this, I am appreciative. Thank you very much. Leave a like and a comment below. And as I said, I am planning on making more Paint to Life episodes. I really will. I mean, pretty sure I will. No, I really will. I will. I don't know. I, I'm making a D&D campaign. I've 3D printed the hell out of a bunch of stuff. I want to talk about that campaign in the purpose of how to DM. I have so many ideas of what this channel could be, but I just don't have the time to make them all reality. But I'm going to do my best. More to come from me. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. And, and as always, wash your hands, people.